I'd like to tell you a little bit about this historically significant home, which was built between 1922 and 1926, according to the Sanborn fire maps. The property was purchased by Eva and Charles Shriver in 1919, but on the deed it said they were not allowed to plant any shade trees or build any sort of a dwelling for at least three years. And in 1921, Charles Shriver, for whom Shriver Drive is named, was living in the guest house, which predates the main house. It is, the house is Mediterranean Revival, and interestingly enough, it's a kit and catalog home from the Gordon Van Tyne Company in Davenport, Iowa. So the Shrivers were able to look at a catalog and order this entire house with flower boxes included and an attic in a basement. And the uh, materials were shipped to Fort Myers and then they found a local contractor to build the house. And boy, did they build it. It's overbuilt. You walk up the stairs and there isn't a sound. So we have really appreciated that. The Shrivers had two daughters, Gladys and Aldine, and one of the former owners found a cameo of one of the daughters, which we have. And we also have a 1930s photo of the house, and it pretty much looks the same, except there is no, there are no, there's no rainforest around the house. Um, it's pretty bare, and they could certainly see right to the river. And the original property went right from McGregor Boulevard to the river. And that changed in 1944 when one of the owners sold off that, that, that river footage. Um, two years ago, the Krant family, who owned the shell factory in Bonita Springs and, and North Fort Myers, came to visit the house. And they had lived in this home from 1950 to 1965 and they had some wonderful stories to tell about what it looked like and where they slept and uh, uh, in the living room it was not there was a sunroom right off the living room which someone opened up a little later and for the Krant children that was their parents television room and they they told us that they had pinky and blue play hanging up on the wall of the television room um, and then when we all went into the kitchen, they told some delightful stories that there was a table in the middle of the kitchen and their father would pull, the, put the table to the side and teach them all how to dance. There was an eat-in kitchen, little table and two benches. And interestingly enough, they kept a pet baby alligator in a cage on the counter. Harold dared his wife to put her finger in the cage. And if she would do so, he promised her $100. And she didn't hesitate a minute. She put her finger in that cage, was bitten, and walked away with $100. When we went upstairs with the Krant children, they told us that the first bedroom, which had a sleeping porch, was for the two daughters. And the second bedroom, also with a sleeping porch, was for the two sons. They, there were two twin beds in the room. When it was hot in the summer, the boys would pull their beds right up to the window and stick their heads out because it was so hot. They were looking for any breeze they could get. A little bit later in the 60s, their parents got a wall air conditioner in their bedroom, and the children would all you know, pull their blankets into that room and sleep on the floor. The house was featured in Grandeur Magazine in August of 2008, and there was an interesting owner who had lived in the house for 19 years. He was a carpenter and a collector, and he actually created a chapel out of the storeroom. He salvaged three beautiful stained glass windows and installed them in the chapel and brought in a pipe organ, a kneeling bench, a baptismal font, an old Bible, and it's a beautiful room, probably would make a great master bedroom. Other interesting things that he did, he totally redid the kitchen. Um, he installed gates and fences from India. Um, and you can see this all in Grandeur Magazine. The house
house is national register eligible the state sent out a surveyor in the one nine hundred eighty s leo richardson and under the category of architecture this house would be eligible the family room also has an interesting story this this was an add on in after nine hundred sixty five michael and ruth hansing lived in the house he was from yugoslavia and a military man but also a, an anthropology professor and we hear that ruth his wife was tired of having artifacts around the house so they built on this rectangular room off the kitchen and he was able to have all the artifacts out there was a drop ceiling neon lights and he held his classes there. 